you started your career Hello. here in Monaco as a player. Hello. Did you feel the natural step to start your managerial career here as well? And you've worked under some great managers, the likes of Arsene Wenger and Pep Guardiola. What will you take from working under them and how will they influence your style of management? Very good question. Uh, yeah, I said it goes without saying that for me, when the offer came, it was quite logical. My heart talked. You know, the, you know uh, obviously the connection I have with one club in London, but this is where I started. This club always and will always have a, a big place in my heart. That goes without saying. Um, so to be able to come here and, and start here again, you know, it's a dream come true. I, I, won't, I won't lie. A lot of work to do, as you can imagine, um, but I'm more than happy to be here. And now talking about uh, the managers that I had, you know, I learned with a lot of them, every single one of them, whether they challenged me, whether sometimes they were doing the wrong stuff, that's where you learn the most when things are not going well. But if I talked about, uh, uh, obviously, uh, uh, Arsene, Arsene uh, unlocked a lot of stuff in my mind, you know, made me understand what it was to be a professional, what it was to perform, uh, I will never forget that. You guys know the relationship that I have with him, so it goes without saying that obviously I will always carry uh, some of the stuff that he was doing. Obviously, as I said, and, uh, and as I always say, you know, you learn from people that they inspire you, uh, you're going to learn, but uh, on the other side, you need to also put your own little mix in it. And if you go into, you know, Pep, Pep for me is the reference. Uh, for me, I'm not saying for everyone, it's not right or wrong, that's, that's the reference for me. Uh, I relearned how to play the game when I went to Barcelona under him. Um, so he goes without saying that with Pep you can talk about the game. I, I think he will not even go to sleep and still talk about the game and uh, you will fall asleep and he's still talking. So you guys know some of the invention that he had in the game, he's way ahead of the game. I see it, I saw it closely. And then also that you guys don't know, the French people will tell you, a lot of people didn't inspire me in France, uh, and especially the non-school. Uh, I talk about uh, uh, Arribas, uh, I will talk about uh, Suedo, I'll talk about Denwex. You will have to do your research on that. Um, but those people breathe football, understand football, and from afar, I was always an admirer, an admirer of the non-team that won the league with, uh, I think it was two or 13 players from the academy. They were from National 1 back in the days. I don't know how they call it now. They change the name all the time. But uh, those people inspired me too because that one-touch football, playing attractive football, they were already ahead of the game. They, they invented transition. Not for me in France. They were so quick in transition that it was so difficult to defend against them. I played against that team, by the way. We didn't lose, by the way, also, just to put it there. Uh, but no. Um, all those guys inspired me, but the obvious one, that obviously you will know. Uh, and don't put on the side, uh, I, I got educated also before coming here to prepare me to come here in an acad in in academy. I went to a pre-academy called Clairefontaine. And I, I will never have been the player that I've been without Clairefontaine. And obviously, as you know, coming here, so Claude Dussault, Francisco Filio, um, They, 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 they helped me a lot to understand the game. Christian Damiano, André Merel. I didn't have André Merel, but still, he was in and around the building. But what happened at Clairefontaine is that they, they trigger your brain. That's what they do. They make you understand the game in a different way. Instead of, you know, making you bigger, faster, they develop your brain and they try to try challenge your brain, which I think is a very important point uh, in football. And also, they make you understand that you need to enjoy playing. Uh, apologies, apologies, <laughs> apologies if you've already answered elements of this question already. But Your French of course, is not that great. <laughs> no, not so good. Um, of course, we remember you as one of the world's greatest players. But what does it take to become one of the greatest managers? And also, do you know what kind of manager you will be? Or is it something that you learn over time? I actually answered, but I'll do it again. Thank you. Um, Merci. You're gonna to have to maybe re ask your question because I'm, I'm thinking earlier about the about the about the last one. No, I think you need to be you need to be able to be uh, uh, flexible. Sometimes the opposition also give you something that you need to respond to. You need to see it. You might change something out of time. You might not change something out of time. 
I think you need to have some concepts that are clear, but within the concept that you have, you need to be you need to be flexible to to, this, to a situation. It's not only you on the field; you're playing against a team, and ultimately they might cause you trouble. You might not have the ball. You might have to defend low. You might have to go and press. You might have to uh, to, to have an, uh, uh, playing four uh, uh, of the ball, playing three on the ball in the same game. I don't know. I'm not telling you how I'm going to play. But I'm telling you that you need to be flexible. But the concepts of the team will always be the same. And what was the first one, sorry? What does it take to be able to Oh. Will help in terms of what I had to do as, as a football player. And tell, I wouldn't even call that sacrifices for me. is a way of living since I'm... Since I'm seven, for me it's like breathing. Sometimes you struggle, right? We all struggle sometimes when you go to the mountains. You struggle breathing. It doesn't mean you cannot breathe. But it's a way of living for me. That's how I am. It's like breathing. Football, sometimes you're going to take some bullets. Sometimes people are going to praise you when you don't deserve the praise. Sometimes you're going to get, uh, receive some bullets when you maybe don't deserve. But you need to know that it's going to happen as how it's going to happen. And you need to face the problem. That's one of the most important things. And for me, What's important also is patience is key. You know, we live in a generation where, where when I grew up, uh, you had to make the first step to the, to the senior players. You had to make the first step to the coach. Now, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't know even how to phrase that one, you have to go to the new generation. You have to understand their codes. You know, the way they come sometimes in training, uh, you, it's not if I come like that in training, the way maybe the walk that they have, or the, the way the little limb that they have, my, my coach would have sent me back straight away in the dressing room. But right now, we're living in a new world where the older generation now have to go to the young generation. You have to step to them. You have to communicate. Sometimes you have to laugh. Sometimes you have to be hard. And sometimes you have to let them be. Uh, the trick is when do you have to do that? But as long as the concepts are clear and they understand it, and by the way, they can animate it, it also helps, then hopefully you can go a long way. But as you all know, results matter. But results only happen if results for me are just a consequence of what happens before. You know, when you were, uh, we all know that we're here to win, right? But I don't like to mention the, the word winning. That should come if you work well. 